right, guys, welcome to um, our team. Let me go ahead and mute everybody, too. Um, you can all unmute yourselves by scrolling over, uh, hovering over the little microphone button there and unmuting yourself as necessary. All right, but for now, I've got everybody muted. So welcome to tonight's team's call. Uh, tonight's team call, <laughs> say that right, uh, it's March 13th, 2018. And I'm Tracy Anderson. I'm a Gold Elite 2 from the Seattle, Washington area. And tonight we've got a couple of very special guests and timely guests. We're going to start with uh, Lorena Spolatini. She is a Platinum One, Director One from... Um, Prince George, is that right, Lorena? Uh, yeah, thank you, Diane. Um, British Columbia. And, uh, and then we're gonna follow uh, Lorena with Rick Teague. And uh, it's all very timely because this Saturday and Sunday, we've got events in British Columbia. So um, Lorena is gonna be at the events at both of them and Rick is gonna be at both of those events. So we definitely want to shine some light on those events that are coming up and make sure we're utilizing them. Uh, but for now, we're going to start with Lorena. We want to hear her story. She has a very, very powerful story. And I met Lorena at, um, in actually um, Springville, Utah, at the headquarters. She came to a fly-in to check out the company one time when I was down there with some guests. And I was just struck by, um, she's just kind of a no-nonsense kind of gal. She's willing to do what it takes to get things done. There's nothing that's going to stop Lorena from overcoming any obstacle that's in her way. She's very determined and very committed and uh, in all areas of her life, as it turns out. And she's had to overcome some pretty big obstacles. So Lorena, um, she also has a great product story. So we can't wait to hear um, in your words, how um, you've come to be in Modere and how it's helped you. So let me make sure you're unmuted, Lorena. I got hey, there you go. Okay, there I am. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm thanking uh, Rick and Tracy for having me here this evening, um, talking to you about my story. It's, uh, it's kind of, um, uh, I'm blessed that I got to meet everybody. And um, I just thought I would tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm 54 years old. Can you hear me, Tracy? Is this sound good? Okay. I'm 54 years old and I'm a single mom of two kids. And uh, they're actually grown up now. They're 21 and 19. And um, if, if I go back and tell you a little bit of how everything um, happened, it's, uh, I'll start with, um, I lost my mom when I was 21. And um, I was an only child, very close to my parents. And at 38 years old, I lost my husband. And I had um, two little girls at that time already. They were two and a half and five by then when my husband passed away. Um, so, that was really hard. <laughs> and uh, eight months later, after that, my dad passed away. So it was a, a really big year where uh, a lot of things happened. But um, I was very fortunate because um, I had my trade. So with my, I'm a hairdresser and a lash technician. And having a home business was probably the best thing I ever did because for me, uh, by having that home business, I could raise my children and take them where they had to go and work at the same time. So it made it a lot easier than, than working in a salon. So um, that part of my life was, it just made everything very uncomplicated when you're going through a lot of grief. And um, yeah, so we'll move along here because uh, that's the sad parts and we don't want to dwell on that. But um, years ago, I uh, had a car accident and um, it left me with uh, really bad back and uh, hip injuries. And I was really active before that. I, uh, I, ha I was an instructor at a gym loved working out. I probably worked out four days a week at the gym. I instructed four or five days a week and I ran three days a week. I loved running. And when I had the car accident, um, 
that they put everything to a halt. So at the time, I should say that the morning of uh, my car accident, I just finished running with my girlfriend and we just did, um, what was it, 13K that morning. So we ran 13K, get in my vehicle, um, and I was hit. So that ended everything. So it was um, a, a long process to get healed. But, you know, you just take the good with the bad and you keep on going. I... Um, Found out probably I was in grade nine, I think it was, when I, uh, the doctor told me I had uh, arthritis. So I dealt with that, but natural products and okay, you just go on. And uh, after the accident, uh, um, my MRI showed that I, they found osteoporosis. So <laughs> it just it kept on going and going. I was like, holy crap, I'm a mess, right? <laughs> so um, that's okay. I took supplements i just kept on doing what i was doing i couldn't run anymore of course but i just kept working out uh, in different ways i decided to let's go trail walking let's do this let's do that you have to change your lifestyle so i did that and um by doing so i still got to keep active uh what can i talk about now ah i met betty ann <laughs> When I was in high school, we we're super close friends. And um, after high school ended, Betty Ann moved away. And we just kept in touch all the time. Whether by phone, she'd come visit her mom back at PG. And um, when I was in Vancouver, I'd call her up and we'd meet up and, and visit. And she was always, always doing social marketing. Laura, you got to try this. Laura, you got to try that. <laughs> And I was like, no, this isn't my thing. I don't want to do it. And um, out of the blue, um, she um, called me up. And she was so excited. And this was the beginning of July. And she was so excited that she found these products that would for sure help me. And I'm going, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. What do you got now? And... She said, no, I already sent them from me to you. It's all free. You're going to try this. You're going to feel better. And she told me that she met uh, Anna Woodward and she gave these products to her. And I said, oh, okay, great. So I uh, decided to, um, as soon as I found them in the mail, I, st I started using, using the product. And uh, it was BioCell Life. And I started using it. Um, and I thought to myself, what's this going to do for me? I read the ingredients. It meant nothing to me. I didn't know nothing about hyaluronic acid. I knew nothing. So I started researching and taking the product and God, I'm telling you, lo and behold, within a week or two, it was started working. It really started working. I felt like my pain was leaving my body and I felt more agile. Um, and that's huge because when you get in a car accident, you can't move very much. Very much. You, you're going through physio, you're going through everything the doctors tell you to do and nothing's working. This product was a miracle for me. It actually started to heal me. And I thought, what the heck is this? I um, noticed the biggest thing was if, if anybody out there has osteoporosis, has arthritis, has any kind of injuries, um, when the weather changes, that's the worst time. That's when you really feel it. And so I said, this is going to be the test right there. Let's see what this product can do when that happens. Up in Prince George, we get pretty cold weather. And... Um, it just was the, like the pain felt like it was cut in half, literally cut in half. I was like, oh my God, that's when I really got excited. It's working. It's really working. So I was like, oh my God, I got I to gotta tell Betty Ann. I got to tell Betty Ann. And um, it, it, it just, everything started coming together. Like I said, okay, I'm not going to stop taking this now. It's working, right? And um, I found that then I was on my second bottle and 
you know, but he answered, oh, wait till you feel your skin. And she went on and on. I go, yeah, okay. But, but she was right. Your skin felt, um, I'm older, so I would say it felt tighter. It felt, it glowed. It, it, it just was just amazing. I was like, holy crap, already it's working. And, and just so many different things. I just, I'm good. I could rave about BioCell Life for an hour, but I'm not going to because everybody's using it, hopefully, and they know how great it is. So um, what I wanted to also um, tell you was um, when I looked in, to uh, the product because I thought if that works, what else does this company have to offer? And I found out it was like skincare and supplements and laundry and, and everything. And I went, okay, that's it. I've got, I've got, I've got to get involved. I've got to, I've got to uh, do something here. This is, if that's good, what about everything else? And um, I did, I tried out uh, the trim and I found that that was like, out of this world amazing and um, as I was using the products out of the blue the next thing I know I'm on a flying <laughs> and uh, I'm going to Salt Lake City and I'm finding out about this company and these products and uh, meeting these wonderful people who were just so informative uh, so supportive um, I met and listen to um, Anna, because Anna, of course, was there to meet me. Um, Tracy, of course, um, Rick Teagues. Um, when I got to the headquarters, we got to listen to Justin Sarah, Justin Prince. Uh, and the one that really, really, I love everybody's stories. I do. But the one that really resonated with me was Robert Connolly. I've never seen anybody so real and so in love with what he's doing. And I think that's what really, really clinched it for me. I thought, look at this, look at this, look at this guy, I thought, right? He's amazing. And, and everyone else there was too. Uh, it's just, um, he was the one that stood out for me, that's all. So um, I saw the warehouse, we went for a tour and it was, um, oh my God, it was crazy. We. I thought, holy crap, this place is so large. We probably could, uh, what, Tracy, four or five Costco's fit in there. Yeah, exactly. And so that was really impressive how clean it was, how um, organized they are, and how the whole production is, is on time. And just, they're just amazing. I um, got home after the fly-in. I knew right away. I um, was very impressed with the leadership, the support, um, the people there were amazing. And I decided that um, I've got to talk to Betty Ann, of course. I've got to order everything from my salon. I've got to change all my products at home, get rid of the toxic products, get rid of um, anything that is really bad in my home and and, and just really change everything. So Betty Ann and I um, spoke and she, um, I'm looking at my notes, hang on. <laughs> and she, um, she was really supportive and happy that I was willing to um, come into such a wonderful, such a wonderful company. And uh, at that time, as I joined, um, I had my products. I kept using what I, what I was using before, which was the BioCell and the trim. And I ordered so many things for my salon and my home and switched everything over. I love everything that they have. And I just wanted to um, uh, say that um, I have a purpose now in life, and that is to change um, one family at a time in my life. One family at a time because... I know now Modere has something for everyone. It doesn't matter what you might need, we have it. And the products are so good that once you try them, you'll never go back to toxic products. Never. Um, the, I, 
may I just interrupt real quick? One of the, because we're just about out of time, but one of the things that you told me that really struck me was yes. that, you know, because you had to overcome a lot of loss and, and yes. you, you were I very did. much alone. And that was a big part of your story. It's something that struck me and how really this has given you a family. I mean, you, you say that oh. when somebody comes on this new to the organization, you say, welcome to the family, right? Yes. When you someone a new system that you've yeah. never, yeah, that you haven't had. I, I haven't had family. I lost everybody in my life mm -hmm. for, um, I've been alone for many, many years. So I just have my girls. Yeah. But, and good friends, of course. But yes, when I walked in to Salt Lake City and heard everybody and met everybody, it was different. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an ordinary company. They do treat you like family. You do feel like family. And it just make, they're, they're like a magnet. <laughs> they are. And it just makes you want to be, be part of that family. And yes, when somebody does join, I always say welcome to the family because that's how it is. But um, uh, uh, the only thing I, I wanted to let people know is um, in a short time, uh, thanks for the, with the help of, um, of you, Tracy, uh, Betty Ann, and Anna, I quickly became a Platinum One, Director One. And so I, I, I want everyone to know that not to get discouraged, just to keep on pushing through. Uh, and um, I believe that if you don't give up on something that you truly believe in, then people start to take notice. And that's very important to me because if they take notice, they're going to start listening to you and there will be change. Yes. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Lorena, for oh, thank you. And sharing your story with us. Yeah, it's, it's a powerful story. I, I, I didn't want it to be too sad. <laughs> I didn't no. want it. <laughs> I know. I know. You, you, you've, you've really gone through quite a bit, but I'm glad that you have found a home here with all of us. I um, should have. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You bet. Thank you. So we're going to turn it over to Rick Teague. Rick Teague, are you a platinum? <laughs> Michelle's a platinum. Michelle's a platinum, yeah. Let me clarify. I get to claim it, but I didn't do it. <laughs> Rick's the E3 and Michelle's the platinum. <laughs> but they're a power couple in this industry. They've, they've both been in this uh, industry for over 30 years. They met at, at an event. <laughs> they've got a great story. and He'll share more with you about that. Uh, but truly, we're so fortunate to have somebody like Rick and his wife, Michelle, uh, as our mentors and our upline, looking after us and training us and setting, you know, set, paving the way. Uh, they've been with this company through the transition and with, with all of their, their experience and what they've been through with this company and the, and the way from their perspective they can see the vision of where this company is going I can't think of anyone better than Rick T right now um, to share with us um, some training and things that we can do to make our businesses um, more simple and more effective so I'll turn it over to you Rick all right so you want me to start with just a little bit of my story and then kind of move into a little bit of training and and you and yeah, and you more you know more details about this weekend than I do. Well, I don't... as far as the weekend goes, I mean, I guess just um, Rick will be at the event uh, in Kamloops in Vancouver, so he's going to see a lot of you there. And uh, you know, there will be opportunity presentation for your guests, so we can really get your guests there. I think we're batting a hundred percent for the prospects that have come to the four events we've had so far. Everyone that's come as a prospect is enrolled. So make sure you're, you're doing that, especially you get people in front of someone like Rick Teague. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's a big deal. So don't miss this opportunity. Um, so I guess, you know, really that's what I want to say about that. But, you know, having, you know, Rick on this call, the timing of it, so you can just kind of see what he's about. There'll also be training involved with these events this weekend. So following the opportunity presentation, your guests are welcome to stay, get all your, everyone on your team there so to hear um you know be inspired by rick and and to learn from you know how to really dive deep into this business and and uh make money doing it so yeah go ahead rick all right okay. all right well for those of you that don't know uh my wife and i live in nashville her name is michelle she's downstairs on another call and uh, like Tracy said, we've been in Modere four years. For those of you that don't know, uh, in my former life, I was an attorney. I uh, went to nine years of college. People ask why I did that. You know, the simple answer is, the simple answer is that college was a party for me and I didn't want the party to stop. So I just kept going. 
and that's pretty much accurate. So anyway, got a law degree, got a second law degree, was an oil and gas attorney in Texas and Oklahoma in the early 1980s. Business was great when the industry was great. I didn't really get that. I thought it was because I was great. And then it turned not so great in the mid 1980s. And that's when I learned it really didn't have that much to do with me. I mean, it had something to do with me. I had to work hard, but the timing of what I was involved in had far more to do with my success or lack of it than how smart I was, how many degrees I had and all that. So anyway, my dissatisfaction level with my income got to a point where I got recruited into my first network marketing company. And like Tracy said, I'm, you know, the best thing to come out of that was I met Michelle at a meeting in 1985. We got married in 1987. That entire three year stretch in that company, I didn't really make much money. It was, you know, full-time attorney, part-time network marketer and really right industry, wrong timing, wrong company. And uh, anyway, once again, we got married in 1987, right before the wedding, we switched companies for the first time. And uh, all of a sudden that company actually took off. That's where I really learned what's, what's come to be known as the S-curve. And I, for the first time, got to experience what momentum is really like and started making far more money than I was practicing law and was having about 10 times as much fun doing it. So I did the logical thing and resigned from the bar in Oklahoma and Texas uh, and have been a full-time network marketing professional ever since. So that's if you're counting 34 total years, 31 have been totally full-time. And that gets us to about four and a half years ago. Now at that point, you know, we've been successful by most people's standards. Uh, you know, I tell people all the time, just Google me, you can figure that out. But, you know, we're on the business for home, all, all time, 250 list. I think we're numbered 122 on the last one I looked at. Uh, you know, I think we've averaged in the 1% of all income earners in America every year for 31 years. So you can do the math on that one. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that brought us to this crossroads point. The problem was we kept having to switch companies. We didn't really know why. We knew there was a missing piece of our puzzle. We didn't know what it was. You know, I remember distinctly about four and a half years ago getting to the point where I, you know, I'm like, I love it. I don't want out of the industry, but I can't keep doing what I've been doing. I got to somehow find a way off this roller coaster or out of what I call the network marketing matrix. I didn't know where the escape door was. <laughs> And anyway, that sent me down a path where I looked at everything I could look at, you know, literally every company. And when I say look, I mean, I'm really analytical. My, my gosh, I'm a tax attorney. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, when I look at something, I've probably got 50 to 100 different factors on my list that a lot of people don't ever even think about. Well, I looked at probably, I don't know, 100 plus companies in six months. And I probably visited, uh, you know, half a dozen, talked with the management on probably another half a dozen on the phone. And anyway, just really couldn't find anything that really excited me and finally ended up on a plane and in, in a conference room in Salt Lake City at Modere. And, you know, that was the first time in that whole process that I met a team of people that really seemed to articulate my problem and really, I, you know, seemed to make sense to me that they had identified my missing piece of the puzzle. And those of you that know, you know, have heard this before, you know what it was. It was a simple one word answer. It was called customers. And I was immediately, you know, I immediately pled guilty and, you know, raised my right hand and said, yes, I am guilty as charged. <laughs> Explain why that's the missing piece of my puzzle when I don't even like them. <laughs> And uh, so they did, you know, and it made sense. I mean, it, bottom line, customers are independent of opportunity, you know, and really the companies I've been most successful in, they were pretty much all opportunity, all recruiting, very few customers and it just makes sense. We all know that's got a limited lifespan and for whatever reason, momentum always dissipates and, you know, you can regenerate it some, but the bottom line is it doesn't sustain itself forever. Eventually it, it kind of fades away for one reason or another. And when that happens, if you don't have enough business in place that's independent of that, then of course it's gonna fall apart. 
And so I was on this habit of jumping on on the left side of the curve. The S curve would turn into a bell curve and I would jump off on the right side and jump onto another one on the left side and then jump off on the right side. And that was what kept going on. So what I was saying was going to be an S curve never became an S curve. Bottom line is because those companies in the momentum part of that curve didn't develop enough customer business. So the second question was, okay, I've, I've had an epiphany. My light bulb has come on. I have a newfound appreciation uh, for customers and people that want to go get customers, which we call promoters. But, you know, I primarily want to still concentrate on recruiting and building. Is that possible in Modair? They said, yes, it is. We want to have a world-class home for both. We want to have a world-class home for customers, people that want to get customers that we basically label promoters, and also people like you, Rick, that want to concentrate on recruiting and building a team. So that sounded good to me. And then the third answer was, well, what are you going to do, Modair, to enable us to get customers? What does it take to really get customers? Because a lot of network marketing companies just really don't do that. And that's when we kind of got into another epiphany that comes down to, you know, what I call economies of scale. You know, that just means that when you buy things in large quantities, you get a better price than when you don't. Uh, also owning your own manufacturing plant versus private labeling a product and, you know, and pay it for somebody else to make it for you. What that does is thins your margins because that manufacturer that you're paying for that product has to have its own independent profit center. So the next thing was, you know, are you in a rented office space or an office building that you own? Well, I think any of you would know that if you're going to live in a half million dollar house, your mortgage payment's probably going to be less than your rent payment on the same house. So it's the same deal in the business world. So you take all these companies that have rented office space, private label products, narrow product lines, um, all that stuff, you know, they buy things in little quantities, have to pay a higher price for it. It just makes sense that they've got a lot thinner margins. And when you've got thin margins, it's got to hit somewhere. You've either got to have a lower payout in your comp plan, or you've got to have a higher price that you're charging for whoever's buying your product, or you've got to have lower quality. So really, if you're going to have high quality competitive pricing, and, an, you know, a respectable, aggressive compensation plan payout. It just makes sense. you got to have the margins to do that. And you can't do it. Most companies simply can't do it. So that was a huge advantage I immediately recognized. I mean, in fact, I've talked to people that know what they're talking about. And they say it would take about $100 million to go out and duplicate all the advantages I just told you about. I mean, the real estate the product line, the breadth of the product line, the inventory, the manufacturing capability, you know, the patents, the intellectual property, all that stuff. If you put it together, it's a bunch of money and no startup in their right mind is going to come out there and actually compete with that. And just nobody's going to risk a hundred million dollars into a startup, but you'd have to, to really have the advantages that we offer. So the unique situation from new ways to Modair set up this really kind of, paradox type situation where you've got this authentic ground floor startup type company and you've got these assets and infrastructure of a, like a multi-billion dollar legacy company that's got all these advantages. So that was part of the reason that they were going to be able to go out and get all these customers. So that was the original theory. That was the thought behind the original decision to do this. You know, here we are four years later. Some of you have heard these numbers, but you know, in my typical attorney fashion, I'm like, here is my indisputable evidence that the reasons I started this four years ago have been validated. And the crazy thing is, we hadn't even really hit real momentum yet. That's still ahead of us. We've kind of piddled with it a little bit. We've maybe touched it a couple of months, but we really hadn't had a sustained, legitimate S-curve type momentum run. That's still ahead of us. But in spite of that, Michelle and I have been We've been here four years. We've recruited roughly 40 people personally. That 40 people has uh, basically duplicated into about 4,000 active social marketers. So that's, that's pretty good evidence that there's some duplication going on on the builder side of the plan. So that's like every person we've recruited on average has turned into 100 other social marketers. But, you know, we've done better in the past with other companies, but that's still pretty respectable. 
But here's, here's the big difference. Those 4,000 social marketers have gone out and on average gotten 20 customers each. So if you're doing the math, 4,000 times 20 is, guess what? <laughs> it's 80,000. And that's where we were back in November. <laughs> so I don't even know where we are now. We were adding about six to 7,000 new team customers a month, which I can just tell you, I mean, think about that. We're adding six to 7,000 new customers a month. And after four years, we've got 4,000 social marketers on our team. That's crazy. That's like Guinness Book of World Records stuff. So that tells me that what we're doing is working. We have a promoter side of the plan that's working. We have a builder side of the plan that's working. But in my opinion, the builder side of the plan is gonna work much better in momentum. In other words, momentum is gonna have a much bigger impact on the builder part of the plan than the promoter part of the plan. So that's something all of us on this little uh, Zoom session can be excited about and think about as we go to bed tonight. <laughs> because the, the momentum phase actually is really what I would call a multiplier. It multiplies your efforts. It multiplies your results almost like magic. And, but that occurs on the recruiting and building side. It's not going to have the same impact on the promoter side. So it's kind of like we've still got the best of that world coming and we've already kind of got, see, we've got the part of the S curve figured out. See the part of the S curve where you're really supposed to be in customer gathering mode is when? Stability, like after momentum, post momentum. <laughs> so it's almost like, and that's the part that most companies never figure out. I mean, I hadn't seen a true startup go into momentum type company in the last 15 years that's actually figured out the, the customer part of the stability phase. That's why they all, that's why they all go up and peak and then fall apart and then they're gone five years later. I mean, we could talk about Monavi, we could talk about, you know, Vaisalis, we could talk about where some of you came from, Nerium. I mean, I could go on and on, but it, it, it's the true thing. So, but we've got that part figured out in advance. We've been trying to crack the code on how do we, with all this customer stuff already happening, like the stability part of the curve already happening, how do we go into momentum on the builder part of the curve? So anyway, that's a whole nother story. But that's my kind of uh, network marketing engineer, like we're trying to put a space shuttle into orbit and all the you know calculations have to be precise. <laughs> You know, the comp plan's gotta be tweaked exactly right and all that, so that's really what we're doing and I believe that, you know, if everything goes to plan, I believe this fall or maybe by this time next year, we will hit some type of actual real tipping point and go into that momentum phase. And that just tells me there's like a big blinking sign, you know, pay off ahead, pay off ahead, pay off ahead. And like I said, we've already got the part figured out where you transition from momentum to stability. So that, that's been the trickier part for most companies and that part is kind of already done. So anywho, was that enough on that part? <laughs> yeah, I was taking notes like crazy. I'm gonna have to go back. And, and, you got, and you gotta hang in there. I mean, you know, it's easy to sit here and say, yeah, we're trying to crack the code and yeah, we're doing this and we're doing that. Well, it's not always easy. You know, I mean, when you're not in momentum, which we're not, I mean, I'll just be honest with you. We're not, <laughs> we've tasted it a little bit, but we're not in momentum right now. And when you're not in momentum, you look worse than you are. You know, when you're in momentum, everything looks better than you look better than you are. So that's part of it. So that's what keeps me around. You know, my vision is still intact. I think the evidence is already there. The early evidence is there. I think the evidence later, if we really accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, it's going to be mind boggling. I do think we're going to hit a flashpoint where I think there's more leaders looking at us right now than any other single company in the industry. They're not all flocking here, but they're watching. They've been watching and we do get quite a few leaders. But I can tell you the industry's in a really interesting point right now. There's just not a lot out there for anybody that's dissatisfied with, with where they are and, you know, that wants to move. 
And it's almost every day you're waking up and there's some other company in trouble. You know, I don't know if any of you know people in Monate, but if you do, it's in a bit of trouble, by the way. Big hint there. Yeah, there's a big hint. <laughs> and for those of you that, that aren't familiar with the S-curve, there might be some people on this Zoom that haven't seen that. Rick has a, a training on that, a video on that. So just private message me and let me know that you'd like to see that and I'll send you the um the link or is the real s curve.com is that what it is rick yeah i think that still gets to it doesn't it i, uh, I don't know i'll, I'll, I I'll can... check it out and i'll post it again on our team page because it it explains a lot about where we are and if, if you understand the s curve and where we are on that right now the time to get involved in a company is before it goes into momentum so what rick is saying right now is we're at a very special time as they tweak all these different things to get it get it right for us to go into momentum, um, we're sitting in very very good seats right now. Yeah, that uh, and the brand that pays dot com. That's kind of my newer video. It's got a little bit about the S curve in it. So, right. and I also think we're going to attract record numbers of people from outside the industry. I'll talk about that some. You know, it's not just all about getting leaders from inside the industry, even though. I think we're going to get a lot of those, but really attracting people from the outside world that have never done this before. That's really the true measure of a company's success. And I can just tell you, I think we're going to, I mean, it just makes sense. We're going to attract record numbers of those kind of people as well. So that kind of comes after this. It's like internal shift inside the industry is phase one and then external growth or external expansion outside the industry is phase two. And the bigger phase one is, the bigger phase two is, and I think phase one is, I mean, we're probably still in the early stages of phase one, quite frankly. So anyway, that, that's my little network marketing architect speech for the night. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, it just I think that it says we just need to stay committed to the process and trust that the company is doing everything to get this to, to a place where uh, momentum's coming. And so, you know, it's fill your pipeline, right? Just keep talking to people. We've got, you know, the new product. We heard from Ozma last week on our call, you know, the new, new product coming this fall. You know, we're putting systems in a place to teach people how to make $1,000 a month and then duplicate that. So those, those are going to be key pieces, I think, don't you, Rick, to, to getting the, you know, the, the momentum going? We're twisting on them to do it this uh, in May versus the fall, so I don't know what she told you. <laughs> <laughs> really well well as far as the new product goes she said the fall but the new systems for for you know teaching the modules for teaching people are supposed to come this spring that's what i well, we're twisting on new product for fall oh. i mean not new well we're twisting on that for may so whatever okay we'll see. no promises you didn't hear that from me <laughs> well that, that's something to get excited about <laughs> yeah so a little bit. So you want me to hit this training a little bit? I'd say if they want a lot of training, they need to show up this weekend, but. Well, not everybody's in BC. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> well, here's, here's my training. And really that you're going to hear the company starting to teach on something called L I F E life M life. That actually came from me. I mean, I'm not trying to just claim my rights to it, but it's, it's like, it's not real like rocket science or anything. L is list, I is invite, F is follow up, and E is enroll. So that's that's that part. So list, um, you know, the bottom line is there's just a couple of principles. I think most of you probably know this. I'm all about creating momentum, and momentum generally, if you chart it on a curve, it looks like an S curve. So I think there's company S curves, but I also think there's team S curves. And I think team S curves start with personal S curves. You know, in other words, you've got to do what it takes to develop personal momentum and you parlay that into team momentum. And that can, you know, if you get enough, if you get enough people creating enough team momentum and enough teams creating team momentum, then that's really what pushes the company into company momentum. You can actually even have country momentum that sends other countries into country momentum, and then you can have global momentum. So that's kind of how all that works, but it begins with personal momentum. And, uh, you know, personal momentum, you know, involves an S-curve, a personal S-curve, just like company momentum involves a company S-curve. So the only way I know to do that is 
you've got to hit liftoff, you know? I mean, I got a whole training on that. There's a certain formula that's got to be in place for a plane to get off the ground. And, you know, that's the difference between, you know, walking or driving is planes lift off. They do kind of an S-curve thing, you know? So what does it take for a plane to hit an S-curve? I mean, what does it take for a plane to take off? It's got to hit 200 miles an hour on that runway. I mean, bottom line, if it doesn't, you don't take off and it's called disaster. <laughs> so it's the same kind of thing here. Well, what does that mean? Well, how do you develop momentum? How do you hit 200 miles an hour while you're still on the runway? Well, the only way I know to do that, honestly, is you've got to cut through numbers. There, there is absolutely no substitute for numbers. Now, you know, we could talk about promoters versus builders. I don't know that the momentum is the same on the promoter side. So I am mainly talking about the builder side and building obviously involves recruiting. So I don't honestly know how to go build builder type momentum by being a promoter. So, and promoting is not my forte. So I'm just trying to qualify what I'm saying. There could be some promoters on this call and I don't want to, I don't want them leaving thinking, well, I got to go do what Rick Teague said. No, I'm just trying to tell you what it takes. If you really want to get momentum on the builder part of it, then there's almost like these laws of physics that you've got to kind of play the rule, you know, play the game by. And I can't alter those just like you can't alter the, the laws of physics, you know, when you're on an airplane. Bottom line is doesn't matter how the pilot feels, doesn't matter whether it's raining, doesn't matter if the wind's blowing. Bottom line is thrust plus lift got to exceed gravity plus drag or you don't fly. Did you just catch that? <laughs> oh, man. But there's the same type of formula in network marketing is basically momentum plus duplication must exceed inertia plus distractions. That's a whole nother training we'll go into some other time. <laughs> but the bottom line to make it simple, I'll quit rambling is you've got, to, you've got to cut through some numbers. And you know, we just, re we just recruited somebody about a week ago and they kept asking us all these questions and it was a little bit kind of hard to wrap their brain around everything. And they're like, just look, tell me what I need to go do next. I'm like the very next, the very thing you need to do. Cause this lady was telling me she wants to be a builder. I know she does because she was a big builder on a team that we were in like, you know, three companies ago. And I said, the first thing you need to do is go get three people, go recruit three people. I believe everybody on this planet can go recruit three people and I believe if you get in the habit and the rhythm of getting them to do that, now, you know, I know there's some, there's some talk around the company, this 10-3 thing and all that. I get that. So I'm all for 10-3, but I would kind of personally, I'm going to flip it 310. <laughs> and the first thing, especially now, if they're telling me they mainly want to be a promoter, that's obviously different. But if they're telling me they want to build a team, if they're telling me they want to ultimately earn more than 5,000 a month, I'm going to tell them that you've got to do some building. You know, I think 5,000 a month is about the cap. It's about the current ceiling on what a pure promoter can earn. That's just my general ballpark. So if you want to earn more than that, you're going to have to build. First thing you need to do is go get three people. And honestly, you know, part of their ability to do that is how you recruited them in the first place. See, a lot of people, there's something called imprinting. By the time you've recruited somebody, you've kind of maybe imprinted them a certain way. And if you recruit them the way I recruit them, I imprint them in a way that the reason they're joining is to get some of the benefits of recruiting. And the word there is leverage. You know, if you want, if you want to, form a residual income and you want that income to be leveraged and actually start compounding at a certain point, that's got to happen through recruiting. And so if that's what you're, you know, telling them is, is a big plus about this business while you're recruiting them, then obviously after they join, they got to, they're going to be thinking I'm going to go recruit somebody because that's where the leverage starts. So anyway, and then the next thing I do is I know the very second that they join, that's when their excitement is at an all-time high. That's when they're most teachable. That's when they're worried about getting their money back. That's when they're the most nervous. 
that's when they're most susceptible to what I call the power of suggestion. And so I learned a long time ago that right when they're signing up, I try to write that either before or at that time, I'm like saying, I know that you're already thinking of one to two to three people that you just know would be perfect for this. Let's go ahead and get connected with them right now. And in fact, you probably already talked to them. Now, when I say that, most of, I say that all the time. You probably already talked to them. 90% of the time they tell me, yes, they have. And I'm like, okay, the next step with those two or three people you've already talked to about this is let's get them some information. Have you done that? Most of the time they say, yes. <laughs> Most of the time they've showed them whatever video they looked at. They've already sent a couple of people to Madera.com. So I'm power of suggesting, I know you've done it. That kind of catches them off guard. Well, let's connect them right now. This is the time. You know, the clock is ticking, firing gun just sounded. And so a lot of times they do that. So the lady I'm just talking to you about, she's already, I think she got in about a week ago. She's already got two people and one of those people I think has two people. But we're just, we're just folk, and, and they've all got, you know, a couple of customers. I mean, not all of them, but probably the main two at least have a couple of customers each. So I have no doubt by the time we get through a month, you know, we're, we're going to, they're going to have some customers. But anyway, the first thing I'm telling them to do right there before they get their kit, before their products show up, right when they're signing up is you're already talking to two or three people. I know it. Let's connect with them right now. Let's set up a Facebook chat. Let's set up a text group, an email group, a three-way call. I don't care how you do it. Just connect me to those people now. And then if you get one of them, you're doing the same thing. I mean, it's the same thing. It's always the same thing. Go get your three. You're already thinking of some people. You're already talking to them. You've already showed them something. Let's connect right now. And that whole process is called, who can you get me to? 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 And that's what networkers really do. That's called organic tap rooting. And I learned that a long time ago before we had placement suites or binaries. That, I mean, that's how you build teams. <laughs> you do the process that I'm talking about. You always try to drive it a level deeper. And uh, at some point, you hit what's called a fireball. And at that point, the fireball either catches everybody between you and the fireball on fire, or they all burn out and compress out. I mean, it's that simple. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the training you're looking for. You, you, you're probably going to get some of that this weekend. <laughs> But back to the life, it's list, invite, follow up, enroll. So the list, obviously, if you're going to go get your three real quick. See, I don't even have them go do a 50 or 100 person list before they go get their three. See, go get your three. That's right now. You don't have to read a book. You don't have to do a module. You don't have to go turn back clips. You don't have to make a list. You don't have to do a dream board. You don't have to read a book. <laughs> You don't have to watch an hour video. You don't have to get your products. You don't need your starter kit. You don't have to go anything. You got three people right now. That's called low hanging fruit. And you got to get urgent about it and strong about it. And normally if you'll just bring it up in the right way, uh, you'll be amazed at how much momentum you can get rolling just from doing what I'm describing. So after that, somewhere in the process, they do make their list. And, you know, that's warm market. They also, uh, we've got, you know, the company's got a very thorough training on how to develop, you know, ongoing prospects on Facebook. I mean, that's another way to do it. And I highly advise doing that. I'm not the world's expert at it, but I'm trying to learn in all honesty. And then also there's what I call street talk. Street talk is just what you do every day when you go out of your house into the world. And all I mean by that is you're just perpetually prospecting and you just got to learn to, you know, it's almost like prospecting chess with me. It's like a game, you know, sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't, I'm not always like ramming, you know, I don't go out there with pressure on my shoulders. Like I got to go recruit somebody. I'm just naturally always in that mode. And if somebody really catches my attention as being extra sharp, I will try to, you know, I'll take a couple of passes at them. I'll come in at a couple of different angles. You know, how long you worked here? I bet you love it. I'm trying to get them to say something 
that gives me an opening to coming back around and saying, well, you know, don't know if this would be a fit for you, but remember when you said two minutes ago you hated working here? Well, you might at least want to check this video out, blah, 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 blah. You know, however you personally do it, but that's another way of always, you know, growing your list. So warm market, Facebook, street talk. Invite, what I generally invite them to is the brand that pays.com. That's also in social retail live. If you just want to tag them on a comment, I've also done an updated version of the shift is here. You know, it's a four minute video. I've actually given a couple of people lately both videos and say, I really want your opinion on both of these. One's 13 minutes, one's four. I would really be interested to know what you think about each and how they compare. And lo and behold, the last two people I've done that to I actually watch both of them. So <laughs> that's kind of interesting. I send them to modere.com. I also invite them to a live event. If there's one going on, there's a lot of Zooms going on. You know, there's events in uh, Vancouver and Kamloops this weekend. There's always some kind of live event going on somewhere. If there's not one, you can, you can put one together. You know, put a team opportunity Zoom together. Get somebody on your upline to do that. So bottom line is invite, invite, invite. It's like video, event. Uh, you can also do the ad tag message thing in one voice. You can add them to Social Retail Live. You can add them to M3 College and Sciences. Follow up, that's pretty self-explanatory. Just like I'm telling them up front, I don't care how you do it. You just got to connect me with your prospects. Do it on Messenger. Do it in a text group. Do it in an email group or put me on a three-way call. And sometimes the best way to start it is like on Messenger or text, and then you move from that to a three-way call. And then the E part is enroll as either a social marketer or a customer. Uh, one of the things that I'm really using these days is, you know, people, you know, people ask me how much time does it take? I say uh, three to six hours a week. I'm really big on 30 minutes to an hour a day, six days a week. So that's three to six hours. If they're really busy, I might just say three to four hours. And they say, well, well, you know, what'll that get me? You know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm trying to be realistic. If you do three, three to four hours a week for three months, you'll be at a thousand a month. And you know, kind of in the background, the blueprints either get to platinum or get to D1 and you're roughly at that thousand to 1500 a month range. I think any person that really takes it seriously can do that in three months. So three to four, or three to six hours a, a, a day, uh, no, a week, three, three to four or three to six hours a week for three months to a thousand a month. And then if I think they're more aggressive and they kind of told me some stuff like, you know, I like to ask questions. I like to know, okay, in a perfect world, would you, would you rather work a job? Would you rather work for yourself? Would you rather be your own boss? You know, I ask questions like that. You know, most of the time they'll tell me they'd rather work for themselves, be their own boss. So see, if you ask questions like that, you're leading them down a path where you kind of got them. <laughs> you know, I, I was talking with this uh, girl today that does social media. And crazy thing was, she was 19 years old. She does social media for a living. She's in college. She already owns her own freelance social media business. And, you know, she was picking up on this stuff just like that. And I asked her, I said, you know, who's the biggest client you've got? and that you do social media work for. And she said, uh, it was some pretty good sized company in, uh, in Dallas, which is where she lives. And I said, would you rather get paid by the hour for doing that work? Or what if they came to you one day and said, they'd give you a percentage of the revenue you produce for the work you're doing for them. Would you rather have that? And she thought about it for a minute. She's like, Oh yeah, I'd rather have a cut of the revenue than, and just get paid by the hour. And I said, exactly. I said, can you imagine Tom Cruise getting paid by the hour? Or Taylor Swift getting paid by the hour? John Grisham getting paid by the hour? Steven Spielberg getting paid by the hour? No, they get a cut of the revenue they produce. It's a smarter way to work. So just some of these little sayings that I'm saying, if you just learn to work those into the conversation and your recruiting process, I'm just telling you, you can turn into a recruiting machine. 
and customers will fall out of the sky by magic. That's how we got 80,000 of them. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, that's probably about enough for tonight. You think? Yeah. I can't wait for those customers to fall out of the sky. I'll be ready. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Somehow they do. Yeah, well, and that's true, you know, because when I look at my team, I mean, there's, you know, so many customers, more people than, you know, I could ever even imagine, right? So, but it takes a team to do that. As a promoter, you can make really good money here for sure. Uh, and, you, you know, as a builder, you can build a team of promoters that make some good money, right? <laughs> But you can. And I ask people, you know, I will say, are you more in, could you see yourself more just attracting a large customer group? I said, you know, that's what I told this girl today. I said, you can drive people to modair.com with your promo code. And, you know, then we do some marketing on the back end and those customers can refer other customers. I said, you know, you can make a, you know, 20, 30% is what I told her on everything those customers buy forever. But I said, you can also build a team of people that do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, what I told her, I said, do you know some other people that do exactly what you do that are in their own independent social media businesses? And I said, she said, yeah, I know a lot of them. And I said, well, how much of their business do you get? <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. And it was like, duh. And I'm like, well, you get to put together your little dream marketing team and go, you know, take your two or three best friends from that world and form a little marketing team and go get after it. See if, see if it hurts my feelings. But I gave her a choice, you know. I told her about promoting and customer acquisition, but I'm also pitched her on leverage and, you know, leveraged income and compounding income, so. Right, for sure. Yeah, um, you know, find other people that want to earn commissions marketing these products too, right? And, and go from just having, you know, 10, 15 customers to having 7,000 customers, you know, that you're getting paid yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Rick, we so appreciate your time. I, there's so many little nuggets <laughs> that was in that. I, I, I did record it, so I will get this posted on our team page so we can go back and rewatch it and make sure we don't miss anything. Good, I'll listen to it myself to see what I said. <laughs> that and uh and if you have if you're in the british columbia area and you can see rick in person get people in front of him if you're not there everyone knows somebody in british columbia get your contacts there right so um let's fill those events up to go see rick you can see how powerful it'll be and rick's never been to vancouver or british columbia right and you do have your passport i'm assuming <laughs> i do i do i actually do it's a brand new one never even been stamped <laughs> So great. So, uh, so when I'm coming through, do I tell them I'm coming to do business or am I just coming up there on a personal visit? I hear the Canadians give you grief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tony, don't be Tony's a lucky. <laughs> yeah. I, when I was up there in Alberta last weekend, I, they asked me um, what I was going to do while I was there. And I said, well, I do have a business conference. And they said, well, you should have checked business and personal. <laughs> I was like, okay. And that's all they said. But, you know, I they asked me what type of business and multi-level marketing. They said, do you have any product? I said, no. And they just sent me on through. But yeah. I don't look as sus suspicious as you do, Rick. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just saying I am personal. Personal vacation. Yeah. You just see the girl that's coming to pick me up. That's what you say. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to have a I Love Canada shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Let All me right. in. Well, We'll have you back again, um, Rick, all right. so for, for okay. sharing all your vast experience and knowledge with us. It, it helps us tremendously. And uh, wish I could see you this weekend, but uh, wish you all well. And we'll see you, um, those of you on my team, we'll see you next Tuesday, same time, same place. All right. All right, bye, guys. Bye.